Hello YouTube RPG community. This is Lester Crow and his Strolling Bones. And this is a response in essence, I guess, to WW uh, WW Woodwad? Wood WWAD? I apologize, man. I, I don't actually know your name. I've watched several of your videos, but I think it's Andrew or Ander, but I'm, I'm not exactly positive. I apologize for that. However, um, this is a, intended as a response to you. I've done a video on addressing the subject to a degree. Um, this is a more overarching exploration, I guess, of, of the topic. I did a video in response to City Sight. And I can't remember what his full tag is, but the, the, event, the RPG Avenger is what he goes by. That's his channel name. And uh, I, I did a response to a video he made about stigmas behind being a gamer, uh, especially when applied to the younger generation, those going through high school woes, you know, growing pains, I guess you could call them. Everybody experiences that. You guys, uh, at least the video responses that I've seen and your your video in general have pointed to pretty much a commonality where we've all been in some way harassed for our enjoyment of this beautiful and wonderful hobby, uh, usually by ignorant people who don't understand what it is, but they're going to be ignorant about more things than just RPGs. They, the you know, people who play RPGs tend not to be quite as ignorant. They tend to be more open-minded. But I responded to City Sight and talked more so about the stigma that comes with being an RPGer, um, or a or a gamer, tabletop gamer, if you want to, tabletop role player. And that was more specific. That was more about the stigma in general and how people do find it to be the general public the general populace, I should say, do find, or at least it has been my findings, that most average people would would come to the conclusion that somebody who plays or invests time in a role-playing game is a, a geek, I guess, if you will. And now you go on to the lurid, grotesque description of what your your personal idea of what a geek is is and it's a terrible description i mean i'd hate to be the guy who who you describe there as being a geek and I, I like how brady put it when he talked about the the actual origin of the term geek it's like the term punk the term punk is it has evolved into something really weird and when it was latched onto in the late 70s too by that that movement that generation x movement of um you know rebellious youth or or whatever they they took that and ran with it but originally punk definitely did not mean you know street bum who plays a poor guitar if if you will or wears leather with studs and patches which is ridiculous it became a fashion statement in the end but you know uh, geeks now embrace the term geek, but it's not necessarily meant as a good thing. I embrace the term freak. Um, I'm seven feet tall, as I've talked about in other videos, and I get all sorts of flack for that. I say more of my physical confrontations with ignorant people has come from just me being different or being a freak, as opposed to me being uh, assumed as a geek. I guess really, if you want to get into it, anybody who is intensely interested in and involved in intellectual activity is essentially a geek with the way we look at it. Um, any scientist who is worth his weight, who actually does science, um, is going to be a geek. They're going to be involved in a specific set of uh, information. You know, they're going to be doing experiments and reading other people's experiments, trying to replicate those so essentially they are involved fully in the development of theory and try to put it into practice through rigorous testing but essentially they are geeks too i mean a geek is as far as i know is a different than a nerd um and i i'm proud to call myself a geek i personally don't think of geeks as fat slovenous 
people who eat too much. Like, I, essentially, I don't see geeks as comic book guy from The Simpsons at all. I see geeks as usually highly intelligent people who, due to their um, higher intelligence, see through the basic, the basic trappings that most sheep um, fall prey to, I should say. Most geeks tend to be more intellectual, shall I say, or creative, or, or, or open with their creativity, so they don't fall into that. They tend to be black sheep, not sheep um, proper. Uh, but regardless of that, I, I, think, I think it's a proud thing. I am proud to call myself a geek. Um, I think the question is, should we, the question isn't this, should we go and change people perceiving RPG gaming as a geeky pastime or a geeky hobby per se. That shouldn't be the focus of what we're trying to do if you are actually intent on trying to change the consciousness of people's perceptions of role-playing games. I think what we should do is go out and try to change the perception of what a geek is. Um, you paint a specific picture of geek, but everybody is going to have a different idea. I mean, there are general archetypical you know, ideas out there for what a geek is, but everybody has their own view of it. Everybody knows a geek um, to one degree or another. Now it's, so what I'm saying basically is that it's not a question of what it is labeled as, it is a question of perceptions of labels. And like Brady said, I think a big part of the, of the stigma of, of D&D comes from that backlash of hyper-Christian um, negativity towards the hobby because of some bad things that happened but that's just that was just troubled society and kids there's so many other contributing factors to what happened in those instances that led to all those lawsuits and investigations um, that you can't blame role-playing uh, like like Tanner said role-playing invites it, it is inviting if you're willing to step through of that veil of perception where you think that a lot of people misunderstand the hobby and they see all these flashy pictures and the fact that a majority of them take place in a fantastical setting. So that that's more so what leads people to believe that it's nerdy or geeky in any way, shape or form. But like he said, like Tanner said, it, a lot of people are uncomfortable to jump out of their skin to change their perception of the world because they're comfortable with their perception of the world. And I feel that it's sad to me that that a lot of people, in my experience with explanation, explaining it to people, for the most part, people are pretty hyped up to at least experience it on one level or another, even if it's just me giving them, you know, a flavor book or something along those lines to allow them to read into it a little bit more and see if it's something that they're interested in doing. Um, for the most part, it's a po it's positive feedback. It's not negative feedback. Even if the person doesn't want to play, they're they find it interesting, and um, the really ignorant people aren't just, they're just innately not going to like that, but they tend to be very ignorant people, not willing to or too afraid to change their point of view on the world, or at least challenge their points of view on the world by exploring other avenues. So that being said, I think that I said this in the other video that I did for City Sight. But my basic response to anybody who tries to give me flack for being a role player is fuck you because I don't really give a shit if you like me or not. Um, I will find people who like me and I will be friends with them. I'm not going to be friends with everybody on the face of the planet and that's just the way it is. Uh, that has been proven to me from a very young age. Um, you know, very hard to trust people. And like you guys, I'm not trained in any sort of martial arts capacity. I'd say I'd be more like Tanner, where it's experienced through modes of combat. Like my friends and I battling each other, playing with, you know, sticks, learning how to use the bow staff by seeing what you're capable of, just trying to hit your friend, you know, knock him on the head a little bit really lightly or poke him with the stick, you know. Um, but... I guess I'm going a little bit off on a tangent there and really to bring it back around what I want to say above all is we shouldn't care what people think of the hobby um, 
if the hobby, like you say, uh, would WWAD is to become mainstream, it, that's a total perception change on the average populace's part. Really, us trying to equate it to people like Vin Diesel and things along those lines, um, Stephen Colbert and that, I mean, yeah, that will help to a degree, but at the same time, I think cool is in the eye of the beholder. I've met some people who I think are fantastically cool, but you may think are not interesting in any way, shape, or form. So really to say one way or another who a cool person is, so to try to equate that to the hobby, to try to sell the hobby, or to try to get people on a base level more interested in RPGs, I think that's just silly. Uh, I think the hobby speaks for itself. And with spokespersons like ourselves, if we aren't closed-minded like they are, but just in a polar opposite way, closed-minded about, oh, you're, you're like this, so I don't want to introduce you to the hobby. Um, if we are the opposite of that, if we are inviting and informative about the hobby, it doesn't really matter what kind of stigmas are placed on it. it the, the games speak for themselves. You put a game together with a good game master, which all of you guys seem like you're great game masters in this RPG community. For the most part, everybody who makes videos here seem like they are more so a narrator than a player. And all of you seem like you have your own strengths that you would make a great game master in, you know, there's a myriad of different ways to make a great master, but you all seem like you have that capability. That being said, I just want to say, I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing as far as is RPG gaming geeky or, or does it matter if it is perceived as geeky? Um, I think that's the main thing. I say anybody too ignorant to anybody who gives you a hard time, but is too ignorant to sit back, listen and absorb what you tell them about the hobby, then, you know, fuck them. Who cares? No, it doesn't matter. They're going to make bad role players anyway. They're going to be too nervous to get out of their skin. They're not going to be able to believe in the world. Um, it's not a big deal. But if we are good ambassadors to the game or to the, the hobby, it's a lifestyle to some degree, then the hobby will grow. And I personally like the fact that the hobby is a little cultish. It's a little, it's occult. You have to invest time points into this. Um, I've invested lots of time points into reading these things. And people... Have never challenged me, uh, have never challenged my sanity, or really believed that I was a nerd in that way because I use all the information, the language, uh, fantastic writers for a lot of these products. So I use l the language help. I've learned more about um, the base philosophical ideas behind um, musical application um, through metagame thinking or the use of language or the use of religion through these books that really bright oh, there's so many good books out there too which is a subject that's touched on by lots of guys um tower guard dm win he has some excellent videos about these diff different setting books and different books that touch on different subjects that are relevant to role-playing games these things are pieces of information i pick up that i can use in my real everyday life and i absolutely adore that about this hobby it increases my knowledge base of the world and that's by being open-minded. Yes, it is packaged and painted and displayed in a specific way. So for D&Ds, as an example, it is it is pro it produced or at least advertised now as a combat-oriented role-playing game. Um, and But at the same time, there are so many elements in there. There's math to learn. There's so many creative and artistic elements involved in role-playing. There's acting. There's... It's, I could go on for hours, literally, about what this hobby offers us, offers everybody. I mean, everybody role plays to a degree anyway with their real, in their real life. I mean, I apply all these things to help me break down and understand the world in a better way. I mean, I can see it from an, I see the world intuitively from a role playing perspective. When I attempt activities, I th I'm thinking, like, am I using my agility? Am I using my strength? Is this a toughness-based or, or, or uh, fortitude-based? I think like that. Uh, I think it lends to better storytelling and a better uh, comprehension of the rules. But I, I do. I literally think like that because 
I find that that's all the game is. It's a reflection of real life experience. So I wouldn't say it's geeky. I would say living is geeky. Um, I'd say anybody who's really into a sports team, uh, those guys, they're geeky too in their own way. They spend all their time points focusing on sport, learning odds and players. And I've been through that. I've played sport too. I've been um, I've been not necessarily the captain, but I've been an assistant on teams before. Um, I've played sport at a high level. Um, I've played sport my whole life. That's how I was raised. Been in lots of fights. but And I utilize that all to my role pl- for role-playing purposes. So... That being said, I hope this is uh, even remotely (laughs) along the lines of something you were looking for as far as responses to your video. I really appreciate that, and uh, I really like that subject. I thought it should be touched on more, and like Brady, I'd like to cheers you. Um, I'm sorry that I don't know your name once again, uh, but Woodwad, 100 videos, great topic. Uh, Thanks a lot, and uh, keep them coming. See ya.